First graders, we're going to get started on a new project today and we are going to be learning about an artist named Chris Uphughes. Now, he is from Chicago, Illinois, which is not that far from here, and he is what we call a street artist. That means that you can find his artwork almost anywhere out on the streets, especially down in Chicago. Um, his, well, first of all, a street artist would be a person that draws his art in the street or on sidewalks. It might be on the sides of buildings, but he has permission to put it there. Um, it could be in windows, things like that. The cool part about Chris Uphughes is that you can also find his artwork on t-shirts. So he's really starting to become well known and he's most known for his happy pictures of hearts. And it's just not a normal heart, it's hearts with faces on them. And the faces are always happy, smiley faces. So we will be making our own version of Chris Uphugh's hearts. And we will be practicing to begin with on your marker board. So I want you to make sure you have your marker boards as well as a dry erase marker. Um, we'll be drawing hearts, we'll be drawing overlapping hearts. And then when we start to draw on the actual paper, um, once we're done drawing, we're going to be working with some different color groupings, but we will talk about that more. So I will do the drawing demonstration in just a second. Okay, so as I mentioned, you are going to practice drawing hearts on your dry erase board. Um, since I don't have a dry erase board, I am going to do it on my piece of paper and then I will flip that piece of paper over so that um, I can do the actual project on the other side. But again, you're doing this on a marker board first, just until you get the hang of drawing the hearts and then overlapping the hearts. So, to make a heart, you're going to make a bump and a bump. It's kind of like a bird or like the letter M. You want them to come down the same amount on both sides. And then you make a V shape. And that V shape, the pointy part, should be straight down from the middle of your heart. So now I'm just making a diagonal line and a diagonal line. And there's my heart, okay? What you are going to do is practice doing this over and over and you want to make a variety of sizes of hearts. You might want some big, you want might want some medium size, and some that are teeny tiny. You might also have wide hearts and super skinny hearts. Okay. So just practice, practice, practice. Now, once you're done practicing, you've got the hang of drawing the hearts, what you want to do next is start practicing how to overlap hearts. So overlapping, when that happens, you can't see part of the heart that's being overlapped. So take, for instance, my hands. Say that my hand was a heart, okay? I have a heart there. But all of a sudden, I have another heart that overlaps it. Do I see the whole heart? This one? No, because this is over the top. So the same thing happens when we draw. When we draw, we wouldn't be able to see all of the heart that is being overlapped, okay? So we're going to practice right here. Say that this heart is the one that is in front or closer to us. This is the heart that is overlapping the other heart. So I am simply going to stop drawing this heart right there I'll draw it over here. I'm gonna make my diagonal line and I see that I need to finish my heart like this. Okay, now this heart is overlapping that heart. Okay, maybe I want it to happen here. So the next step on your marker board is to practice overlapping. We're doing this on the marker board so that we can kind of work the kinks out. It's easy to erase on a marker board. It's not always easy to erase on a piece of paper, okay? So we're going to say that we are done practicing on the marker board. 
and we are going to get a piece of paper. I will pass them out to you and you are going to start drawing your hearts. Now remember, you have to do some overlapping. Not all of the hearts need to be overlapped, but some do. Okay, so I'm gonna draw a big one, diagonal line, diagonal line. Bump, bump, diagonal line, diagonal line. Again, I try to make this V-shape straight down from the V-shape that's made up here, okay? Bump, bump, diagonal line, diagonal line. Bump, whoops, I got carried away that time and just made the heart. Bump, Oop, I did it again, you guys. Try it over here. Bump, bump, diagonal line, diagonal line. Now, I have not done any overlapping yet, so here we go. Bump, bump, diagonal, diagonal. Bump, bump, diagonal, diagonal. Bump, bump, I'm gonna just pretend to keep drawing. Diagonal, diagonal, okay? Now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine hearts. I am pretty happy with how mine is looking right now. So I am going to stop right there and grab one of these sheets. And again, I'll pass them out to you. This is a sheet that has all sorts of different examples of eyes and mouths, similar to what um, Chris Uphughes uses in his pictures. So you're going to choose different eyes and different mouths for each of your hearts. Now, you may want to come up with your own type of facial feature, or eye, I should say, or mouth, but you are welcome to use the ones on the sheet as well. And again, all of these faces should be happy because that's what Uphughes does in his hearts. He makes them all look happy, okay? And we'll go around and just keep on doing this until we have put faces on everything. Okay, now you get the idea. I would continue on and put the rest of the faces on and then you're going to get it okayed. Once I okay it, you are going to Sharpie with a thick Sharpie. Everything you drew should be big enough that you can use a thick Sharpie. And for this one, you can use your Sharpie to color these in if you want it to be black. Otherwise, you can leave it white and we can add color to it when we get to the next step. All right, so pretend I have Sharpied everything. I then am going to erase my pencil lines. Ugh, I had Sharpie on my finger and it went on my paper. Darn. Okay, I 
and then I'm going to show you something cool, which if you did any of the art online when we were learning from home, you've already seen this, but I'm going to show you again. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to take some markers and we are going to trace around the outside edge of our heart with a nice thick line. Now, these markers have nice pointy tips, especially if they're brand new, but they also have this kind of line on the side. And if you draw, it takes a little bit of practice, but if you draw with the side of your marker, you get a nice thick line. And that's what we want around the outside edge of our heart. If you have to do it a couple times to get it nice and thick, that's fine. I'll do the same thing over here. Like that. Now, if you would like, you can stop with the marker right here. I mean, you would trace the outside of every heart, but you can stop or if you would like, you can go ahead and add a little bit more color. Okay, now I wouldn't color anything solid in unless it's a small space like my tongue is there. And maybe I want just a little bit of blue right up here. And again, you don't have to do that part, okay? Um, I am going to do one more heart just so that you can see what it looks like with a little bit more color added. Okay, like that. And maybe, uh, I'll color this in too. Okay. So I would continue on and color the rest of my hearts in until everything is finished. And then what I'm going to do, this is the super cool part that some of you already know, but I'm going to take a paintbrush and dip it in some clean water and check this out. I just paint along the outside edge there and whoo, it turns it to watercolor paint. Now you can keep painting the whole heart in if you would like, or you can just paint the outline like that. I'm gonna keep going just because I think this is super duper cool, but it is totally up to you. And now it starts to show some values, so some light and it fades to dark or dark that fades to light, like that. If you would like to, you can do the, I wouldn't do the tongue because I colored the whole tongue in, but I can do a little bit in the blue, like that. And I'll do my yellow. And like that. And you would continue until you have all of your hearts done. Okay. Now, the very last step of the project is to do your background. Okay. Now, for the background, we are going to um, do little pods of colors. Okay. And we want to just use the warm and the cool colors. So, what I mean by pods is Maybe I want this space right here to be the warm colors. I'm just going to make dots using the warm colors like that. And I'll use some yellow because yellow is one of the warm colors. And I'll use some orange. Ooh, 
something like that. Now this section is done. Okay, now maybe I want this space to be the cool colors. So I'm going to use my greens. I'm going to use my blues. And I'm going to use my purple. Now, my paintbrush is not the best. Pretty sure yours will work better than what mine is, but you get the idea. So I've used some green. Turquoise is fine for a green. And then I'll get my purple. You gotta be careful because the purple and the blue look very similar. You just don't wanna use blue if you're thinking you're getting purple. All right, just like that. And I would continue on until I had the whole background filled up with spots of warm colors and spots of cool colors. I don't want to mix the warm and the cool together though. Okay, if you have any questions, please let me know.